today's tutorial is on how to do basic shapes as well as some shading techniques. So if you are new to the drawing realm and don't know all your shading techniques, hatching, cross hatching, stippling, and blending, uh, this video should help you out. This video is designed to help you guys out to getting those shading designs down as well as a basic, more simplified version on how to create three or As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. I always like to hear from my class, see what you guys thought about the lesson. If you have a question, hit me up in the comment section. I'd be happy to answer your questions. All right, here we go. We are going to be working on some of our basic shapes again. Uh, four basic shapes. Uh, some of you already have down, drawing 101 on your paper. I switch back to the pen. I like the pen better. It works a little smoother for me. Alright, so we've already talked a little bit about how to take this square and we're going to change it, augment it over to the cube. Now for the cube, a number of you already know how to draw the square over square. Connect the sides. Yes, cube. This is the transparent cube. Now the only thing with this is that this is great, this is a cube, this is perfect, but this is not a uh, opaque cube, a house, a brick. Something that you can't see through. So for right now we're gonna do the opaque version. O-P-A-Q-U-E. One more time, O-P-A-Q-U-E. And for transparent, it's T-R-A-N-S, parent, P-A-R-E-N-T, okay. Now for the opaque cube, we got a couple ways we can do this. The easiest way by far that I think is where you take the square, you rotate your paper, number one, number one, number one. Again, say that so that your brain has that predetermined notion of how long that line should be. Cap it off, one, two, there's your cube, okay? A couple other variations that we can do with this, again, um, if I take three lines and stack them out, connect the base, connect the top, there's a book, put a roof on the other end, now we have another cube. Very similar to the way PlayStation does the P and the S in their logo, okay? Very similar fashion. Um, and then if we are stacking cubes on top of cubes, what shape is this? It's a square, this is a square, this is a square, so this can be a square or a rectangle. Uh, still keeping into the same plane um, on your designs and that will give you two blocks stacked next to each other. Or let's say we want to have this one jet out. Now we have three cubes. One is transparent, two are opaque. This can easily turn into a op uh, transparent cube. You just have to look at where the lines are flowing. A lot of times artists will draw the opaque versions and then sometimes put the transparent on top of it. However, the issue is, is where all these straight lines are lining up, it's better if you can have some of them slightly off kilter so it's not completely vertical because this right here, if I just drew that straight line, I mean it's the same as drawing a single vertical line, put an X over the top of it, and then just connecting the sides. Well, what is this now? Well, this is exactly the same as that. It's just because these two lines lined up so perfectly, you miss the 3D effect. So always try and if you are going to do something transparent, that you're going to have it slightly off center. So let's bring these ones down. Bring this back like a line, like a jarring M. The back back here, I'm gonna make it on this side. These two match up. These two match up. This one matches here, here. Bring the other line down for the last leg. Connect the two. Connect that one. 
Okay. Slightly off kilter, got the full 3D effect all in that one little space. All right, cube, by far most difficult. All right, let's throw it down to the triangle. Triangle to pyramid. Now for the pyramid here, we are going to be doing the triangle first. On the back side of that, we're going to add the less than or greater than symbol, and there's your pyramid. Let's say we want to make this transparent as well. Okay. I know I messed up right there. It's no big deal because this is all scratch, rough draft stuff. One more time. Always keeping it slightly off center so that when you do that vertical line there or do the lines in there, they don't you don't lose the 3D effect. Alright. Down to the circle to sphere. Okay. Now to this, remember we did add shading. We'll go over the shading styles again in just a few moments. Three circles, one, two. Three. Just go ahead and do this one little part so I don't have to do it in a minute. So I just drew a little line going back and behind to give myself some space. Three beards, hatch and cross hatching patterns. Off the table, on the table, shadows right below the shadow of the orb. This one is going to be above the table. Now just to give you a little bit of helpful tip, put an arrow in here, label it light, so I know all the light is coming in this direction. So I need to make sure that my shadows match up to the arrow. Now the arrow would be drawn prior to doing these shadows in other instances. However, for this, this case and purpose, I went ahead and just did the shadows, just wanted to show you where the light source would be coming from. Simple enough? Good. All right, here we go, guys. On to shading. Okay, shading 101. First one, hatching. H A T C H I N G. I know the end is a little small. One more time, H A T C H I N G. All right, hatching by far one of the simplest versions here. Diagonal lines going in one direction. The farther apart, lighter the shade, closer together, darker the shade. Primarily used in comic book illustrations. Usually you'd see somebody's draw line laid out and then they would do some hatching lines to show. You could show stubble on the side of it or where there's more striking shadow. Just varies on how it's used. Next one we have is cross hatching. Hatching, hatching, cross in front of it for this one. Cross hatching, diagonal lines going in one direction. But then you come back and go across them again. Close together, darker the shade, farther apart, lighter the shade. Come back to our guy. Changes the direction, changes the way that some of the lines are laid out. Moving on down to stippling. S T I P P I L I N G. Okay? One more time. S T I P P I L I N G. 
All right, stippling. Let's talk about stippling for just a second. So one thing that I will never try to incorporate into an assignment, however, this is a shading technique that you can use. By no means do I recommend it. All right, for stippling, it's a bunch of dots. There's two problems. Number one, the sound. The sound makes us all want to punch you in the face. Number two, that's the wrong way to do it. See the dashes? That's not stippling. Stippling is a series of dots. Now, listen very closely first. No sound at all. We want to be silent with this. All right, let's talk about how to do stippling properly. One, the fingertips are the only thing moving. The wrist, which is off camera, is not moving at all in any form or fashion just because that is not the way that stippling is done. Same thing, same principles work for stippling as it does for hatching, cross hatching techniques. The closer together, the darker the shade, the farther apart, lighter the shade. I'm just going to quickly round out this little bitty section. I definitely want to make sure that you all practice and know this technique, but just enough to know what to do. Let's say I gave it up on a test and I said, hey, where are the four shading styles? I know we only got three. I'm going to be doing one more in a second. So, if I'm asked to see an illustration of that, I want to be able to see it on your paper. So, right there, we got proper stippling, darker, lighter, simple enough. Last one here is blending. For blending, we've got to switch your instruments. Over to the pencil. B L E N D I N G. Hatching lines. Smear with your finger. That's blending. The biggest thing is, on blending, you have to do several layers of blending because we don't want to make our things suck. Number one issue that I have when I get kids who learn about blending and think it's the coolest thing ever is that it's not because you only do this like one little smear and say, look, it's awesome. And I'm like, no, it sucks because you need to do the different levels of blending. Show me different levels of value going from that light to dark, medium grays in between. That is what's beautiful because then you can show me that you've got skill, you've got talent, you've got vision. That's what I want to see. I don't want to just see graphite on paper because let's just let's just be honest here. If I was at a major museum in New York and I just paid thirty dollars to get in to see this exhibit, and all that's in there is some artist who did this and said, "Look, it's awesome." No. You're a loser because you did a dot on a blank canvas, and that's not art. It doesn't tell me anything. Give us some shape, some design. Give me some aesthetics. Give me something interesting. I want to be impressed when I look at your stuff. I don't want to think of it as mediocre. All right? Impress me. Let me see what you got. All right. We got our four styles down. We know how to shade. We know what we're doing. Hatching, cross-hatching, stippling, blending. Diagonal lines, cross them back over, the dot thing, and the smear thing. That's the four styles. Make sure you got it covered. See you guys later. Hey class, I hope that you liked that last video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down there at the bottom. Now I'm going to get back to uh, doing my thing, which is uh, work on my own stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow me on the web. I got a bunch of places you can find me, such as Pinterest. Or t no, not, not, we're not doing Tumblr. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Group Me, that's a new one for me, and Steam, uh, and my personal favorite, YouTube. Check me out, like and subscribe, see you guys later, next class. Follow, see you later, next class, do your homework. <laughs>